So, let's dive right in here and see what all we got in the ultimate cut of Watchmen. Now I have taken, I went to great pains to do scans of every possible angle of this box. So you got the front here, and you got the back, and you got the spine, and then uh, inside, it's basically just magnetic. See? There we go. It's quite nice. You got uh, pictures. See, these are the same uh, shots that were on the back, uh, the uh, backing of the interior of the uh, director's cut. And then, inside, we got the Watchmen Ultimate Cut here. And it also comes with the motion comic. Now they didn't even put it in, didn't even bother repackaging it. Let me just slide these out here. Um, yeah, so there you go. So it's just a nice little box that uh, holds everything. They didn't even bother repackaging it. They just put it in as is. I, I got to say, um, I didn't know what to expect from the motion comic, but I was really, really impressed with this. They did such a good job of it. Um, I mean, it's almost like a fully, it's almost fully animated. It's like this close. But it's got like a full score and sound effects throughout. The only drawback, and I've heard a lot of people complain about this, and I kind of agree, is it's not done with a full cast. It's just done with a single narrator reading the text and performing the characters. And some people had a problem with it when he would do the female characters. See, I've listened to a lot of audiobooks and whatnot, so it really wasn't a big deal to me. And I thought he did some of the characters really well. Like, I really liked his performance as uh, Rorschach, and I really liked him as Dr. Manhattan. I thought he did a great, great job as those two characters especially. Yeah, I think it would have been better with a full cast. But if you're looking to, to just jump into the graphic novel, but you're not a big reader, I definitely recommend checking out the motion comic. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous edition, it's pretty close to complete. They they don't have the backup features, obviously, it's just the main story. And, and they cut out a couple of minor things here and there, but really just because they're doing it in a slightly more cinematic style and it would have been redundant to have dialogue during those moments or whatever. So there really isn't much missing. And the whole thing runs about five and a half hours, but it's divided into 12 episodes, so you can just watch it at your leisure. Myself, I was totally taken in by it, and I actually watched the whole dang thing in two sittings. I just had like a Watchmen week. I sat down and I watched uh, the maximum movie mode on the director's cut, I watched the whole motion comic, and then I watched the, the ultimate cut and all the extras, absolutely everything, and just had a blast. And they're quality extras too, like they're extras that I would actually watch again just because I enjoyed them. Okay, so then we get into the ultimate cut of the Watchmen, which basically just duplicates the cover of the main box here, and you got your nice... I did scans of all of these too, so I don't even really need to show you, but I'll just sort of show you how it all unfolds. Uh, just pull that out for a second. So you got that. We'll just pause the uh, box shots here. So it's just a gatefold thing. And it actually lists the contents on the inside, which is nice. Because um, I hate it when... Cause they, they actually did come with... Uh, both of these actually came with uh, like a piece of paper on the back that describes the contents. And I have lost both of them. <laughs> I don't know where they went. I usually keep those and file them away. I have like sort of a a box that I put in all the backings just to, to keep them together. And normally I keep those, uh, but I don't know what happened. Um, I'm, I'm thinking they might have accidentally gotten thrown out when uh, Annetta was in the process of packing up to move or I was cleaning or, or whatever. So anyway, basically again you have, uh, it, it's set up much the same way, let me just uh, straighten these here. It's set up much the same way as the uh, director's cut. You got uh, movie, extras, digital copy, and that's that. And then uh, the only insert was uh, just a little thing here to, to give you the, the code for the digital copy. And that's that. Now as for the Ultimate Cut itself, we haven't really talked about that, have we? The Ultimate Cut itself is essentially the same as the Director's Cut, except it runs about another half hour longer. So. If you were to jump straight from the theatrical cut to the ultimate cut, you'd be getting about an hour's worth of additional material. So this is about three and a half hours, this is about three hours. So you're getting about a half, a, almost a half hour of additional material there over the director's cut. Now, most of what that additional material is, is Tales of the Black Freighter. Because, like the comic, in the ultimate cut, Tales of the Black Freighter has been intercut into the main story. So it cuts back and forth between the Black Freighter storyline and the main storyline. Some people don't like that. 
which is why it's good that the director's cut is also available. So if you don't like that, you have the director's cut as an option. Myself, I love it because it just makes it that much more faithful to the original comic and that much more thorough of an adaptation. Plus, in addition to the Black Freighter segments, you've got the bridging segments that surround them with the kid reading the comic and the guy at the newsstand. And there's a lot of little bits and pieces of the story, certain things that lead into main events of the main story, that occur during those moments. So it really gives you a much more complete picture of the sequences of events throughout the story. Now my only complaint about it is, you know how I mentioned how the Black Freighter story is very tightly interwoven into the main narrative in the graphic novel? It's not done quite as well in the ultimate cut. It's done about as well as could be given how they decided to, 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 to do the to, 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 to do the multiple cuts, namely to have the theatrical cut and then later release the director's cut and the ultimate cut. A lot of people complain, like, oh, what's the multiple cuts? It's like, you know what? Before Watchmen even hit theaters, Zack Snyder said in multiple interviews, from multiple sources, that there was going to be three cuts of the movie. So if you were still in the dark by the time this came out, it's your own fault, you know? Pay attention. Pay attention to stuff. Just read news about upcoming releases so that you don't get stung with the uh, double dip fury, you know? Because this was not done out of the blue. This was announced well in advance, and people were well aware of it. So there's really no excuse. They could not have been more upfront and non-secretive about the fact that there was going to be three different versions of Watchmen to choose from. And I think it's great that there is, because there's a lot of people who like different versions of it. A lot of people didn't like the Black Freighter story in the comic, even. So they prefer the director's cut, because it just sticks to the main story. But people like me are, you know, perfectionists and want it as complete as possible. So I love the fact that we have the ultimate cut as an option, because that's as thorough as it can possibly be. Um, plus, I really liked the characters of the, the two guys at the newsstand. I really enjoyed their, their subplot in the original comic and, and was sad that they weren't in the, the movie, like the, the, the original cuts of the movie very much. They're in it a little bit, but really not in any way that would be significant or that you would really remember them much. But in the ultimate cut, it's a much more memorable subplot because, you, well, you get the whole thing. Yeah, so anyway, what I was saying, uh, yeah, Black Freighter isn't... <laughs> 20 minutes ago. Uh, Black Freighter isn't cut in as seamlessly in the movie version as it was in the comic book. And I think the reason for that is is pretty simple, basically, because they planned in advance to have three different cuts. So the other two cuts were given precedence, so they were designed to stand on their own without the Black Freighter stuff uh, interwoven so much. So whereas in the comic book it would it would sort of interweave back and forth and and flow much more naturally from one to the other and had a lot more parallels to events in one or the other. Uh, in the ultimate cut, for the mo it, they do that to some extent, but it can be a little bit jarring. Just like suddenly you're into the Black Freighter story again and then it comes back and yeah. There are moments where it's, it's more of a seamless transition, but sometimes it just kind of seems to crash into the Black Freighter story and and it's like, whoa, oh, okay, we're back to this now, okay. And unfortunately, as a result of that, some of the original parallels between the Black Freighter story and the main narrative are lost, uh, lost in the translation. So, whatever, what can you do? Overall, for me personally, the ultimate cut is my preferred cut of the movie and the one that I will watch over and over and over again. And when I feel like just going back to film school with Zack Snyder as my teacher, I'll watch the maximum movie mode on the director's cut again. So, or, you know, if I just feel like watching the main, you know, putting the main story on in the background and not getting too deep into it, I'll probably put the director's cut on and, uh, you know. Zack Snyder describes the ultimate cut as the everything including this kitchen sink cut. Um, this was really a cut made for the hardcore fans to make it as thorough an adaptation as possible. It was a hard sell enough as it was in the theaters. To have this version in the uh, theaters, I think would have would have put too many people off, and they wouldn't have uh, enjoyed it as much. And it, it would I mean, it didn't do very well in the theaters anyway, but uh, yeah, it would have done worse, <laughs> I think, if they put the ultimate cut in the theaters. And, and again, this is why I say I am so overwhelmingly pleased with how they handled Watchmen in the movie. 
um, as a longtime fan of the graphic novel. We don't get this kind of treat very often, you know? I mean, how often do we get three different cuts of the movie, and we're told that we're getting three different cuts of the movie up front, from the beginning, and we have one that is specifically geared towards the hardcore fans? That just doesn't happen, you know? Usually, you get your shitty adaptation, then you get an extended version of the shitty adaptation, but it's still a shitty adaptation. So here we start off with a pretty damn good adaptation, plus a great adaptation, and then a darn near perfect adaptation. So it's not often that fans of source material from another medium get treated to an adaptation that is done so thoroughly and so much with the fans in mind. Watchmen is essentially an art film. It really is. It's an art film that got a $150 million budget. <laughs> but it really is an art film. And I was surprised that they tried to push it so hard as a mainstream movie because I don't think it is mainstream material. As the reaction to the movie should be a clear indication. I mean, just look at the comments on my previous video. Some of the negative comments about people who really did not like the movie. I think it's it's very clear that this is not a story for everybody and never will be. I mean, it was the same with the graphic novel. A lot of people hated the graphic novel because it was just not their cup of tea. I mean, there's a lot of moments in the movie that are very hard to watch, even for the most jaded viewer, just because the, the subject matter is so dark. Spoiler alert! From this point on, there will be spoilers. I've tried to avoid them so far. A couple of mild ones, but nothing that's going to affect your plot enjoyment. But this, these ones are big moments. Okay. All good? All right. So, a few, di a few things that were particularly difficult to watch. Um, well, comedian raping Sil Silk Spectre. That's pretty unpleasant. Uh, and, and beating her beforehand. Comedian, again, uh, killing the pregnant woman in Vietnam. That's pretty rough. The whole sequence of Rorschach becoming Rorschach, tracking down the child killer to his lair and seeing the dogs gnawing on the, the little girl's leg bone, and then subsequently Rorschach hacking the guy to bits with the meat cleaver. That's all really hard to watch. That whole sequence is just emotionally challenging. I mean, it really is. And there's a lot of moments like that in Watchmen. It's funny, I was in one comment, or I think it was a couple of comments on the first part, was like, yeah, I love how all these parents were all surprised taking their kids to see Watchmen and getting all bent out of shape because of the sex and violence. It's like, well, did you not notice that it's rated R? <laughs> rated R for extreme graphic, brutal violence and explicit sexual content, nudity, language, and disturbing imagery? That should be a good tip-off. Parents, ratings are your friends. And the little descriptions behind them as to why the movie got that rating, those are your friends too. Use them. If your child grows up to be completely fucked in the head, it's your own goddamn fault for not t paying attention to the ratings and taking them to see Watchmen when they were six years old. Don't blame the medium. Blame yourselves. All right. Well... I think that pretty much covers everything. Uh, yeah, so basically the long and the short of it is I got both because I wanted all the extras. Because I love Watchmen and wanted as much Watchmen goodies as I could possibly get in terms of the, you know, the movie and anything to do with the movie. So for me, the ultimate cut is truly ultimate and the director's cut has some awesome extras. Oh, and picture and sound quality are fantastic. I don't think I really need to go into that. It looked fantastic on, on my dinky little screen, so... <laughs> Happily project away on your 110-inch projection screens and enjoy. Oh, I should mention also, this edition is out of print because it was a limited time collector's edition, and the ultimate cut is out of print as well. Actually, this is one of the last things I bought before hitting my financial woes. Back in June, it was one of my big treats in June, and then it went out of print on June 30th and has been out of print ever since. You can still get the DVD version fairly cheap, but the Blu-ray edition is now going for collector's prices. So, good luck. You, you might, actually, you might find some people willing to sell it cheap. You know, it's not all, it's not all price gougers out there. So, keep an eye out for a deal and uh, see if you can pick it up. But uh, just bear in mind, it is out of print. So if you want to get the ultimate cut, you might want to jump on that fairly soon because, uh, it's getting harder and harder to find. 
That's not to say that they'll never re-release it. Warner Brothers has a tendency to put things out of print and then bring them back into print later. They did that with the Batman Anthology collection, I know, and the Matrix collection and stuff like that. So I'm sure that they'll bring the Ultimate Cut back in some form at some point, someday. <laughs> Alrighty. I think we've rambled about Watchmen enough. So next time, let's get on to something else. Don't know off the top of my head what it'll be. Oh, actually, I do know what it'll be. But I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> so for all you know, I don't know. I could just be saying that to go, ha, 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 ha. All right. That's it for me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching, and sayonara.